Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Crellin. I'm a chiropractor physician and a physical therapist. Thank you for taking this time to watch this video on non-surgical spinal decompression. But before we get started, you might be a little bit more interested in what my background is. Initially, I went to school for physical therapy at the University of Connecticut and practiced in West Palm Beach, Florida for a couple of years doing mostly sports medicine, but a focus on musculoskeletal injuries. At that time, we saw a lot of professional athletes and we did a pretty good job of getting them back on the field. But there was always a certain amount of patients that did well under chiropractic care that I felt I wasn't helping. So I got very interested in chiropractic care, talked to different chiropractors, including some who are also physical therapists, and I decided to go back to chiropractic school. From Florida, I went to Sunnyvale, California, where I went to Palmer School of Chiropractic West and studied chiropractic there. In 1991, we opened the chiropractic physical therapy practice, and it seemed to be going very, very well. We helped a lot of people, but about 12, 13 years into my practice, around 2005, I started hearing things about non-surgical spinal decompression. This new therapy was getting a lot of people better where a lot of different kinds of standard of care treatment wasn't, including physical therapy, chiropractic, epidural injections, and even surgery. People were getting very good results after those therapies had failed. So in 2007, we purchased a non-surgical spinal decompression unit from SpineMed, and I haven't been disappointed. What I'd like to do next is talk to you a little bit about how that machine works and how it affects the body and how it does what other therapies don't do. To understand how the spinal decompression table works, you really need to understand a little bit of the anatomy of the spine. So right here we have of what we call a motion segment. There's a vertebra here, a vertebra here, and here's the disc. The nervous system is completely encapsulated by bone. It's the only organ of the body that's completely surrounded by bone. And the reason for this is, is the nervous system is delicate, but it's, and it's extremely important. It has a consistency of cooked spaghetti. So it can be injured very easily. So this is why it has this protective mechanism. So again, this is the vertebra, vertebra and a disc. And what I'm gonna do is, this is a sponge which is going to mimic the disc. It's full of air instead of water. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna lay it down here. And now we're looking at the disc from above, what we call a bird's eye view. And during the course of your life, you get different insults to the spine, whether it was lifting or a car accident or just sitting for an extended period of time, eventually, you're going to have injuries to the disc and you think of this as a jelly donut and these are tough fibrous layers of dough that house the jelly right here and right behind here is the spinal cord then you have the nerves that come out of the spine like this so when you have an injury you might tear this it sets you back for a few days get some inflammation goes away a little while later, a couple of years, you get another one of these, and then another one, and another one, and eventually you're gonna find a little canal for this disc, this jelly, to ooze on out and find this nerve. And it can actually move that nerve, what we call displace that nerve. And now you have pressure up against that nerve, which causes pain, nervous and tingling, weakness. So as that nerve gets, that, excuse me, that disc gets damaged, you start to lose water content. When you lose water content from the disc, it becomes thinner and thinner. So now we're looking at this vertebra over here, this motion segment, vertebra, vertebra, and now you can see what's happened to the disc. Here it was nice and big and fat and healthy, now it's thin. So as it gets thinner, these two vertebrae get closer together, and this hole where the nerve comes out get smaller and that's where you can uh, create pressure on the disc. So there's actually several ways, to, I'm sorry, pressure on the nerve and there's actually several ways to do that. As that gets thinner, the nerve bulges out, it can also put pressure on that nerve. So if you can rehydrate that disc, make that disc a little fatter, you can take the pressure off that nerve. So in spinal decompression, you're pulling here here and you're creating a negative pressure
And when you create that negative pressure from 25 millimeters of mercury to a negative 25 millimeters of mercury, you get water rushing in, H2O, you get some glucose, you get oxygen, you get something called glycoaminoglycans, GAGs for short, those are hydrophilic proteins, they come rushing in and you can get that just to heal, theoretically. In addition, that negative pressure will suck that disc material back in and away from that nerve. And that's where that negative pressure occurs because there is no resistance from the body and you're restoring the water content of that disc and getting the pressure off the nerve. And that's the nuts and bolts of how the spinal decompression works where other therapies don't. It's really the only therapy that directly treats the disc other than surgery, which doesn't heal the disc, it just uh, removes part of the offending piece. So spinal decompression is very conservative, it's very safe, and it's very effective. And in the case of a herniated disc, the mechanism is still the same. It creates that negative pressure, but it will help pull that herniated piece away from that uh, nerve root. So right here we see the nerve going down and the bulging discs and when you pull away, creating that negative pressure, that disc will now suck in like that and come off that nerve root. And that's the theory behind treating a herniated disc. In addition, you're also treating the degenerative disc and usually these go hand in hand, uh, especially if the injury happened over time. Many disc injuries have a story, unless you get in a car accident and a fall down the stairs, Usually there is a story that leads up to uh, a significant uh, symptomatic picture where you're now not only just getting some back pain, it's unrelenting back pain, and now it's also leg pain. So this spinal decompression will treat both conditions. Now I'd like to demonstrate how the non-surgical spinal decompression table works. Here we have Dr. Alex Krellen. He's laying supine on the table. As you can see, we have the pelvic clamps right here. Then we have the bolster right here, which bends his knees and flattens his back. And here we have the restraints that stabilize the torso. So as the table elongates here, stabilizes the upper spine here and creates that negative pressure that we're looking for for the healing. Non-surgical spinal decompression is an excellent alternative for those folks who have yet to solve their back pain problem. Most patients who come to me have failed physical therapy, have failed their chiropractic treatment, failed epidural injections. Maybe they've had surgery and didn't get the response that they thought they were gonna get, or maybe the surgeon told them that they couldn't be of help to them. Non-surgical spinal decompression is safe, effective, and economical, especially considering a life with pain. If you feel you might be a candidate for this type of treatment, Please feel free to call my office. I'd be happy to sit down and talk to you. Thank you.